Hello, and welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this game, we will be covering Gothic 1. Now, to me, the biggest problem that this game has is that it makes a bad first impression, especially to uh, newer players and more modern gamers. Now, we will go on that. We will explain that in a retrospective. But the first couple hours of this game, I really wanted to give up, and I was about to put it down and never jump back to it again. But luckily for me, I'm the type of person that has to at least do my damn very best to beat a game and put more than a couple hours into it, especially if I paid for it. So as I went on, and as I put more and more hours into this game, I finally found out what this game was about and what the developers were going for. And when I truly, truly understood this game and its mechanics, then I really under understood what a great game this was and that everyone that's in the RPGs should at least try this once. Now on to Gothic 1. During the long years of his reign, he was able to defeat all foes of his realm. All except one. swords for his army, and every man guilty of a crime, no matter how insignificant, was forced to work in the ore mines of Corinus. To make it impossible for them to escape, the king sent out the best magicians of the kingdom to create a magic barrier around the entire valley. I was one of them. structure of magic. We were trapped inside our own barrier. One second of negligence was enough for the prisoners. Corinus was now under the control of the convicts. The king had no choice. He had to negotiate. He needed the ore. Month after month, the king supplied everything the prisoners needed. Month after month, they brought the ore to the edge of the barrier in exchange. Until the present day, another convict was brought to the cliff. He did not know, but he would change everything. In the name of King Robar II, bearer of the scepter of Verant, I sentence this convict to... Stop! Convict, I've got an offer to make you. This letter must reach the leader of the Magicians of Fire. You're wasting your time. You may choose your own reward. They'll give you anything you ask for. Very well. I'll take your letter. On one condition. Spare me the rest of his nonsense. How dare Keep you. silent. Right. Send him in. After being thrown into the prison, you run into a man called Diego, a member of the faction called the Old Camp. After informing him that you have a message for these mages, he tells you that most people would slit your throat just to get a hold of these messages. And after that, he informs you that the only man that can get you in contact with these mages is a man called Gomez, the leader of the faction called the Old Camp. And after that, you're on your way and the journey truly begins. Now as most of you know, I do not like to spoil the story of these games. But I must say, the atmosphere and the setting around this unique tale is a very great one and a very deep one at that. The different factions, and yes, there are other factions that you can join. The, the, different, the different personalities that the people within these factions have. The different uh, politics that run throughout this world, because yes, there are politics. And even to the minor details of the fact that mine is the currency in this game, and yes, there are ore barons, and yes, there are other people who are against them. Things like these really, really make the story truly stand out. That even in a world like this, it's not much different from the world that you and I live in. 
and the main character's quest to deliver this message. And overall, like you or me would probably do in that situation, try to get the hell out of this damn hellhole. Now on to the gameplay. Now on to the gameplay. Now I want to discuss combat because it, combat is very different in this game. And the control controls are very different. And they might turn newcomers off to the game. But I, I recommend that you take the time to learn these controls. Because even though I don't recommend them and I don't like the way that they are, I finally got to understand them. And it became very easy. Not the game to be very easy, but for me to understand the controls better. And that all I had to do was do my best to master them. And that learning them wasn't a pain in the butt anymore. See, in this game, you have to use the control up button for your actions. If you want to pick up a fruit, control up at the same time. If you want to um, attack somebody, it's control up or control down the block. If you want to talk to somebody, it's control up. Now, a lot of people complain about the controls, and I can understand why. But in the beginning, as much as it seems like you're never going to learn the controls, after a couple of hours in, you'll know how to do it. You'll know how to use them. Now, very much from the beginning of the game, it is evident that this game will not hold your hand. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean is, from the first couple of minutes on, you're going to find out that you're in their world and you're considered prey to a lot of these creatures that you are not Superman and that you must learn to adapt and what do I mean by adapting well see the combat system in this game is very much about patience you have to learn your enemies movements you have to learn how to counter at the right time and you have to study the weapon you are using and you have to study your opponents whether they be a creature or whether they be a human you have to study their patterns because one wrong move and you could be dead, and I do mean it. You are very weak, especially in the beginning of the game. A couple of hits from the weakest looking creature can kill you. Now there are bows, there are maces, and there are swords, which you expect in a standard RPG. But you can also buy potions, you can also skin animals for their meats, you can also smith weapons, and these are very much done very well. But what I think that the gameplay of this game proves is progression. Now, what do I mean by progression? I mean that this creature that was whooping my butt in the first 20 minutes of the game, after I leveled up a couple of times, I can one-shot him. And that's very much satisfying, satisfying when a creature that was owning you in the beginning of the game, you can go into a flock of them and basically make their whole species extinct if you want to or try to do try to do your damn well best to but that does not mean that you are invincible because other creatures will be lurking the atmosphere of this game very much portrays what is going on in the world very bleak and very grim when you head into a forest you find packs of animals and a lot of them is going to give you a tough time one on one nonetheless your best bet is to not fight packs of animals because especially in the beginning you cannot handle a lot of these animals you can barely much have a hard time fighting them one-on-one -on -one, let alone when five of them are jumping you so you have to learn how to lurk these animals one by one and pick the right time to attack from now that I love the atmosphere in this game because as I was saying with the it being grim and it being bleak it really really makes the game shine in my opinion from the old camp looking like a bandit camp to the brotherhood that faction looking uh, surrounded by a swamp and looking more like the templars you know and they have a temple you see this is what the game is going for and you are reminded almost every day of how you are stuck inside this prison just look up at the sky and you know what i am talking about and i love the gameplay in this game and I, it, was, it requires patience and it requires you putting time into the world to understand how this game works. And even though I don't agree with the control system, I very much love this game nonetheless. Now I have very strong mixed feelings when it comes to the sound in this game. On the one hand, the way the weapons sound and the way the, the animals and the creatures in this world sound. And especially I love the music that accompanies you when you're adventuring. But on the other hand, there is one thing that I cannot forgive in this game. The voice acting. The voice acting in this game is flat out horrible. And no matter how much I love this game, I am not going to lie to you guys and try to make an excuse for it. 
It's downright horrible. And if you think I'm over exaggerating, just listen to this clip and tell me what you think. And made me his only tool. Now I'll only serve the sleeper. No more Templars or gurus. Only me alone. Die! Thought I was exaggerating, huh? Well, no. Unfortunately, the voice acting in this game is straight up atrocious, and no matter how I love this game, I can't make excuses for it. I found that only a certain few barely passed and sounded mediocre at best. But still, the voice I don't know if they ran out of money or I don't know what the hell went on, but the voice acting in this game sucks. And there's no excuse for that because when you're trying to draw people into this world, voice acting is a very big part of the game and it can turn people off. Now me, for one hand, I can laugh at that and move on with the game and because the dialogue is not, it's not the best but it's not the worst. But still, they really should have done, took more time or tried to find a better solution with the voice recording because unfortunately it will turn people off to this great game. Now overall, I know Gothic is going to be a tough sell because of the flaws that I explained in this video. But once you get past the flaws, which after the first couple of hours in this game is very easy to do, you will really find a deep, rich, rewarding experience that is this game. And I truly mean that. That's why I made a video on it. The tale that is told in this game is very unique. And I haven't seen a tale like this told in the, any other RPG. It's unique. The progression system, and what do I mean by that? The fact is that you see your character grow and get better with each hour, with each level that you invest into this character. is very great. There are many hours of greatness to be had in Gothic 1. I suggest that you play this game if you're into these type of games at all. And I suggest that you take the time. And if you are intimidated or annoyed by the first couple of hours in this game, then I stress for you to move on and invest more and more hours into it because I guarantee you that there is a very great experience to be had in Gothic 1. Now thanks for everybody for watching this episode and have a great day.